Federal regulators say the benefits of Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine for children as young as five do outweigh the risks. We spoke with a doctor at Stanford Healthcare about the vaccine and how effective it's been in trials and if there are any potential risks. Yeah, that's the right way to look at this. We really have to look at risks versus benefits. And I think that the benefits outweigh the risks greatly for this vaccine for children. They're using one third the dose as they use in adults, which still seems to be very effective. It was close to 91% effective for preventing symptomatic COVID-19 in children, and still very safe. They only saw things like arm pain, fatigue, headaches as side effects. Of course, when we treat hundreds of thousands of children, we may see some of the rarer side effects. But when you look at the long-term effects of COVID-19, it's much more risky for a child to develop COVID-19 and develop long-term consequences than the very rare side effect of inflammation of the heart muscle. So that does sound scary, but if it was my own children, I would give them the vaccine because I think that the benefits outweigh the risks greatly. We also asked about the Moderna vaccine for children as young as six and how soon that one could become available. Yeah, I think they're starting the whole process. So the FDA will get outside scientists to review the data and come up with recommendations, then the FDA themselves will review it and then send their recommendations to the CDC, who will then have to look at that. So it'll really be some time before um, the advisory panel will decide on that. So I think the Pfizer one will be available much sooner than the Moderna vaccine. I don't know the exact timeline yet. And a new study shows that memory loss and brain fog could be among the long-term side effects of COVID-19. We asked how an infection could affect cognitive function and if it matters if you're vaccinated or not. That's a fascinating question. And we have seen this in other long COVID patients. We are doing long COVID studies at Stanford as well. So we have seen people develop cognitive dysfunction, brain fog. We're doing very extensive cognitive testing and we can see that people's memory and executive functioning does go down. We're trying to look at immune markers, whether this is an inf inflammation or autoimmunity where your own body is fighting against parts of its own body and, and uh, developing these antibodies against things in the brain. And we're also doing MRIs to look to see if there's anything structural, we can see any differences. So it's, it's a fascinating question. It has been seen with other viruses and in conditions like chronic fatigue syndrome, myalgic encephalitis, where you can have a viral trigger and then your body produces this inflammation that leads to cognitive dysfunction and brain fog. So Hopefully from long COVID, we'll, we'll get some answers and some treatment recommendations that we can use in other types of syndromes like this. We also asked about new research that shows three teenagers develop psychosis after getting a COVID infection. Yeah, it's, it's hard to make huge uh, declarations based on three patients, but it goes along with this whole neuroinflammatory pathway that we're seeing with the cognitive dysfunction and brain fog, that uh, whether it's some autoimmune process that, that's being triggered and then you're seeing these uh, symptoms like psychosis and other um, psychiatric illnesses. We know that after SARS, the first SARS, people develop depression and anxiety at higher rates. And we're seeing that now even after SARS-CoV-2. So it, it isn't surprising that these children have developed psychotic episodes. You know, it, it will be quite rare, but there is uh, biological plausibility to that.